If elasticity gives our skin the ability to snap back like a rubber band, then collagen's what gives our skin its fullness. Now, it's no secret that as we age, our bodies produce less collagen, which unfortunately leads to a loss of skin structure. But what exactly can be done to give the skin a much needed boost of collagen? Enter one of my all time favorite skin treatments, and the one that's had the biggest impact on my skin over the last four years, which is radio frequency. Yep, it's true. Radio frequency treatments can indeed stimulate collagen production within the skin, enhancing its elasticity and firmness. But beyond just promoting the production of this vital protein, radio frequency can offer lifting and toning benefits, it can minimise the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles, and it could even potentially mitigate some of the effects of sun damage such as solar lentigo or sunspots or liver spots depending on where in the world you are. Now before we get into this video, it's really important that I preface this by saying that you need to embrace the ageing process, because if you're not getting any older then you're dead. But it's also important to remember that while getting older is unavoidable, looking older isn't. Nobody has the right to determine how you look or present yourself to the world. Nobody but you. So don't feel pressured to conform to trying to obtain eternal youth. Likewise, you don't have to surrender to fine lines and wrinkles if you don't want to. And with that out of the way, on with the video. Okay, so aging of the skin can be classified as two main types. First up, we have chronological aging. Now, chronological aging is the natural natural aging process, which involves the shortening of telomeres and the general wear and tear of our cells. The second type is photoaging, which results in environmental damage, particularly from the sun. Now photoaging plays a significant role in the development of skin cancer and fine lines and wrinkles, but it's also one of the most preventable aspects of skin aging. However, if damage has already occurred, radio frequency can be a viable in-clinic or at home skin treatment option. Okay, so at home radio frequency machines are designed to be a safer and more user friendly alternative to in clinic options. Now these typically operate at much lower temperatures, but they're still powerful enough to induce collagen denaturation. Basically, this makes them suitable for personal use with a much lower risk of adverse effects. But how exactly does radio frequency work to turn back the marks that father time leaves on our skin? Okay, to understand this, we first need to look at collagen denaturation. Okay, so collagen Collagen is a key structural protein that's found within the skin, which is made up of long spiral chains arranged in a triple helix, all held together by hydrogen bonds. Think of it as a sturdy twisted rope, which gives the skin its strength and bounce. And it does this thanks to the links between the molecules known as cross molecules. Now, when we expose collagen to heat, this structure is disrupted in what's known as collagen denaturation. Basically, when you apply heat, what happens is that the hydrogen bonds break, causing the triple helices to unwind into a looser gel-like form. Now this transformation makes the skin's tissue tighter because even though the collagen fibers shorten, the heat resistant links between the molecules remains, making the collagen much more elastic. Now after this process, further heating of the skin can cause these fibers to shrink even further, likely through a process where the peptide bonds, which are the building blocks of protein, being broken down. Now the common temperature associated with the shrinkage of collagen is around about 65 degrees Celsius. However, the relationship between heat and collagen's reaction, determined by the Arrhenius equation, shows that the rate of shrinkage depends on the heat applied and the length of time that the heat is applied for. Basically this means that collagen can begin to contract at various combinations of time and temperature and not just at a single fixed point. Okay so let's break this down a little bit more. Applying heat to the skin for a very short amount of time might require temperatures above 85 degrees for significant shrinkage but when applying heat over a longer duration of time shrinkage can start with temperatures as low as 60 to 65 degrees celsius. Now understanding this is super important because it allows you to tailor a treatment that optimizes collagen's response to heat, which basically makes radio frequency treatments much more customizable and effective to the individual's skin needs. Okay, so how do home radio frequency devices like the newer RF work? In today's skin focused world, it is no secret that devices like home radio frequency treatments offer a simple yet effective method for skin improvements. Now, these devices use an alternating current, which, unlike direct current's one way flow, changes direction frequently. In biological tissue, Issues, this rapidly changing current causes ions to move backwards and forwards rapidly and this back and forth motion can generate an immense amount of heat within the skin which is all caused due to the skin's natural resistance to this movement. Now it's for this very reason that if you turn a radio frequency machine on and you leave it laying on its side and you come back and you touch the metal tip 10 minutes later the tip is going to be the same temperature as the air around it because with radio frequency devices the heat isn't generated in the metal tip 
It's generated when the frequency passes through the skin, causing those ions to bounce backwards and forwards rapidly. And the friction of these ions bouncing backwards and forwards through the skin cells is what causes the heat. A really simple way to demonstrate this is to take your hands and rub them together really fast. The faster you rub your hands together, the hotter they get. This is basically what's happening within your skin with radio frequency. It's also one of the easiest ways to tell if the device that you've purchased is genuine radio frequency. If you turn the device on and leave it on the side and then touch the tip a couple of minutes later, if they feel hot, it's not radio frequency, it's warming the skin using electricity generated within the electric tips and then the skin is absorbing that heat. That's not radio frequency. If however you turn the device on and you come back and you touch the tip and it's still the same temperature as the surrounding air, then you've got yourself a radio frequency device. <laughs> You're welcome. The amount of heat that radio frequency generates within the skin depends on several factors, including the tissue's resistance, also known as impedance, the radio frequency current's intensity, and how long the tissue is exposed to the radio frequency energy. The radio frequency devices are particularly effective when it comes to skin remodeling. Basically, their ability to heat the dermis deeply promotes the contraction of existing collagen and the production of new collagen, enhancing the skin's appearance whilst being more cost effective than lasers. Now, in dermatology, radio frequency devices are either identified as as monopolar or bipolar, which I think we're all a little bit bipolar in one way or another. Okay, so monopolar radio frequency devices send a current from the device into the body, and then somewhere on the body there's gonna be a grounding pad place, and this is where the frequency is gonna exit the body. Now this does allow for deeper skin penetration and more effective tightening. However, pretty much like when you're dieting and everything that tastes good is bad for you and everything that tastes bad is good for you, these enhanced results of monopolar radio frequency come at the cost of being way more uncomfortable and carrying much higher risks. I know, typical. On the other hand, bipolar radio frequency devices such as this come with two electrodes placed next to each other. With bipolar radio frequency, you don't need a grounding pad placed on the body anywhere because basically what's happening with radio frequency is the electrical wave is coming out of one of the electrodes and then it's being reabsorbed back by the other. Whereas with monopolar, it's gonna be entering the body and then you're gonna need a pad somewhere on the back or on the back of the arm so that that current got somewhere to exit the body. When it comes to home use radio frequency devices, 99% of them are gonna be bipolar, which offers a more controlled distribution of the current and ultimately a safer and more comfortable treatment. Okay, one of the most asked questions that I get when it comes to using radio frequency as a skin tightening treatment is, is this gonna cause facial fat loss? Now, as we age, the body does this weird reverse mirror thing where you get fat where you should be skinny and you get skinny where you should be fat. This is why as many people get older they develop fat pads under the eyes when for the former part of your life it was nice and flat and thin the cheeks begin to sink in and become hollow where they were once plump and round under the jawline and the chin where there was once no fat is now a lovely hanging balloon of it but what are the risks to facial fat when using a home radio frequency device okay so the concern of facial fat loss arises because radio frequency energy generates heat in the deeper layers of the skin potentially not just affecting collagen but the other cells within the skin such as fat. Now sure in the body there are places where you definitely don't want fat. This is in your arteries, in your vital organs, perhaps on your love handles and in your old chicken wiggler. But there are places where fat is seen as good and it can be youth enhancing if you've got fat on your upper cheeks, around the temples, on the forehead. These are all places where fat is a good thing. But obviously some people, they don't want fat in those areas either. In professional settings where the energy levels are much higher and treatments can be a lot more intense, there can be a controlled effect on fat as well as skin tightening. However, this fat loss is usually an intended outcome and not an unintended side effect. Okay, so while the theoretical risk of facial fat loss from using home radio frequency devices exists, it really is minimal when the devices are used correctly. See, these treatments are primarily designed for collagen regeneration and skin rejuvenation. But as with any skincare treatment, especially one that is put in the hands of the home user, results can vary and the risks really are there. Which is why I always say it is so, so, so important to use your devices responsibly. And while you're using devices, observe your skin's response. Because whilst the power to improve your skin is in your hands, the power to destroy it is also there. Don't do like I done at the start and dive in at the deep end and burn half your face off. Because trust me, as the voice of experience, being that beginner 
all of those years ago. I'm just lucky that I didn't scar myself with some of the things that I've done. Now, if you've got concerns about using a radio frequency device, especially if you've got specific skin issues or conditions that you're concerned about, or you've got set aesthetic outcomes that you want to try to achieve, consulting with a skincare professional or dermatologist is the way to go. Now, obviously you don't need to do this with every device or every treatment, but if you do have specific skin issues and you're concerned, then yeah, seeking professional advice before you get started could give you the peace of mind that you need to be able to do your treatments properly to get maximum benefits and results from them. Okay, so who shouldn't be using radio frequency skin treatments at home or in clinic? Now, generally radio frequency is considered to be a super safe and well-studied treatment and their effects within the skin have been well-studied. But while radio frequency skin treatments offer a versatile solution for many different skin concerns, they may not be suitable for everyone. Now, I know that's something that a lot of people don't want to hear, but it's always a really good idea to know if something is going to cause you more damage than good. Knowing whether something is safe for you to use is definitely, definitely the first thing you should know before you even think about ordering yourself a skincare device or booking yourself in for a skin treatment. Also, radio frequency isn't gonna be the best choice for those who have got moderate to severe skin laxity or deep lines and wrinkles. And those who are looking for drastic skin lifting, tightening and toning, when that laxity is already set in, are probably gonna benefit more from surgical interventions rather than non-surgical ones. But before deciding on going ahead with professional radio frequency skincare treatments, it's a really good idea to consult with your dermatologist or licensed skincare professional first, as they're the ones that are gonna be able to assess your current skin condition, discuss your concerns and goals, and then recommend the most appropriate course of action tailored to your own individual needs. If you've got dental implants in your jaw, you can use a specialized gauze that you place over the top of it to prevent this from absorbing the heat from the radio frequency because you don't want that heating up in your bone. Because again, ouch, if you've got piercings such as in your lip, in your nose, in your ears, basically within the vicinity of where you're going to be treating, remove those before doing the treatment because metal, super conductive, ouch. And of course, when it comes to doing home treatments, avoid going above the orbital rim onto the soft tissue area of the under eye. If you angle it incorrectly, you could end up basically microwaving your eyeball and I mean, I'm yet to meet someone who likes cooked eyeballs. Likewise, directly on the lips or if you're a woman, on the lips, big no-no. You don't wanna burn yourself here and you definitely don't wanna burn yourself down there. Nipples, ouch. If it's gonna hurt, then you wanna avoid it. If you're using it somewhere where it doesn't hurt, then it's probably gonna be okay. Like I say, many of the home use devices are very low energy, so they are safe to use on a more regular basis. Now, me personally, I understand that collagen takes around about six weeks for the denaturation process to kind of complete, and then for the pre-collagen to get laid down in where you've treated, and this pre-collagen turns into fresh collagen. Now, the heat from radio frequency devices does tend to target older, poorly structured collagen way before it targets fresh and healthy collagen, but really you don't wanna be doing a long and intense treatment every couple of days. You need to give your skin time Time to rest and recover you need time for that collagen to kind of break down be absorbed by the body and then be replaced if you're constantly breaking that collagen down for it has a chance to reform and rebuild then it seems pretty pointless to doing the treatment in the first place because ultimately the end goal is to have skin that is plump and fresh and firm not skin that is empty and devoid of collagen and just looking worse than before you start it but yeah, I'm really interested in learning about you guys and your own experiences with radio frequency, both at home and in professional settings. What's your ride or die home radio frequency machine that you cannot do without? What radio frequency machines do you think I should personally try? And what kind of results have you personally experienced from radio frequency as a skin rejuvenation treatment? Whatever it is, the comment box is open. If you've got any other questions besides the ones that I've just asked, of course, like always, they go in the comments box down below as well. And if you wanna learn more about the best radio frequency home use devices. Be sure to check in the description box down below where I link up some of my tried and trusted devices. We can also get to take a closer look at my progress from nearly four years ago up to today. Okay guys, so that's pretty much it for this video today. I am gonna wish you an amazing day ahead of you. Have a fantastic week and I really look forward to seeing you in my next video. So till then, TJ over and out.